Shalom. To all our viewers around the globe, this is TV7 coming from Jerusalem with another edition of Middle East Review. With me, as usual, my friend and colleague, Colonel Reserve, Dr. Eran Lerman. Hello. Retired. Retired, what of can course. I do? <laughs> Retired, of course, but uh, intelligence branch and uh, with all the ramification and the insights. So, uh, Iran, another edition, another month. What and a month. The, and, and what a month. On the yeah, one hand, indeed. on the one hand, I see, is it, does Israel get bogged down in Gaza? I mean, we don't see any strategic change, not in Gaza, not with Hezbollah. We still see the, uh, uh, in, uh, you know, every so often, incoming missiles from the Houthis, from uh, Iranian militias, whether it's in Iraq or Syria. And of course, we saw a major departure of the Iranians' long-time strategy of coming into the front, not hiding behind their proxies, but attacking Israel uh, uh, directly. I asked How myself, would you assume this, this uh, I asked myself, uh, and, and I wrote a piece for, for the Jerusalem Institute of Strategy and Security, is this the point of inflection in the war? And ultimately, uh, the, the, the immediate answer is no, not yet. Um, despite the Iranian transformation from uh, the puppet master to, to the actual uh, pugilist in the, in the arena, um, they, um, the Israeli response, um, first the technological defeat of the Iranian attack, and then the pinpoint signaling to the Iranians that they are vulnerable uh, through a, a, a well-selected raid uh, in, deep inside Iran. Which uh, was in the Natanz area, which uh, is their major nuclear site. So. Signaling that Isfahan and, and its environment can be penetrated and, and that was a very important signal. But all of this uh, transformed the uh, dynamics of the regional game. We have to talk about that aspect. But it did not deflect Israel from the pursuit of the ultimate defeat of Hamas in the Rafah area. What has kept us from going there so far has been the negotiations for hostage release, which have come to naught, and the um, American pressure to make sure that the le level of humanitarian aid is, is increased dramatically, and also that the operation in Rafah would be conducted in a manner that does not involve a massive number of uh, casualties among the uninvolved, uh, which should, and all of this requires careful planning. Uh, so uh, th this was held for a long time, but it's coming. And, uh, and uh, I, I don't think that uh, you, you can turn back. Uh, at this stage, I think to, he, that, to that matter, uh, I understand that this week uh, we had our chief of staff, Herzi Alevi, and the head of uh, Shin Bet, uh, Ronan Bar, going into Egypt. I yes. guess to coordinate the details and also to allay any fears of of them that we are not going to push the Palestinians yes. into Sinai, Sinai. To Egypt, but will take care of it in other areas. I guess around the Muasi, uh, which this is by the this is this is an line, interesting point. The beach side. During April, the IDF pulled out uh, its major fighting division, the commando division, division number 98, from the Khan Yunus area. And people were saying, wait, there's nothing left. Why, if we're going to Khan Yunus, to, to Rafah, why did we pull out of Khan Yunus? But that's the whole point. Uh, had the attack on Rafah come from the north, it would have pushed the Palestinians over the border, which is the last thing that Israel and Egypt by now want right. uh, to, uh, to see happening, uh, because it would really derail Israeli-Egyptian relations, which are dear to us. We've paid for them at the price of the whole of Sinai, and, and we have um, Including over the all years, the oil wells, yeah, sure. True enough, and over the years, this has been uh, a, a peaceful front, some minor, events uh, not initiated by the Egyptians, but by terrorists. So, Ron, that's just a good point, because so, anyone who says that Israel uh, is not seeking peace or not ready for peace, you see how much we sacrificed for real peace with Egypt. We gave up the major buffer of the entire Sinai, which is bigger than the entire territory of Israel, with the oil uh, fields. Wells of Abu Dhabi and so on. All so this forth. for peace. And we were doing that with Jordan. We were going to do it with the Palestinians. But the Palestinians betrayed us one 
after another and another case. Well, the, for the Palestinians, obviously, the, the, uh, the conflict, the, the being in the business of destroying Israel, same as the Iranians, uh, is, is of essence ideologically in terms of perhaps their identity. For Egypt, the, 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 30, territory. the, 30, the 30 years spent uh, in conflict with Israel were an accidental uh, outcome of the bid for regional hegemony, for Arab uh, unity and all these fantasies that they paid very dearly for and brought them nothing. Right. So uh, uh, the, there are f solid foundations in Egyptian interests, in, a, in Israeli interests for the peace, although you know, the, the Egyptian public is still quite hostile, but we saw etc. But at the basic, the basic uh, value of the peace treaty is so important that we need to coordinate very closely with the Egyptians, both on the humanitarian issue, because uh, uh, there's going to be a problem. Once we uh, put our forces mm -hmm. into what is called in the Israeli code maps, the Philadelphia Corridor uh, came out of the computer and stuck. Uh, nothing to do with Philadelphia or, or with love of brothers, but it's just the corridor that uh, that uh, of, of the road along the border between Gaza and Egypt. This has to be taken and controlled by Israel for the bit, for the work in Gaza to be finished. But, but once it happens, one, one minute back, just to show, you know, when it was a matter of, let's say, a territorial conflict, Israel was ready for this formula of. Uh, territories for land peace. for peace. Yes, we gave land, all the land to Egypt, the land to to Jordan. With the Palestinians, land for peace does not work because with them it's not a territorial conflict; it's an existential. As yeah. you mentioned, their aim is to destroy Israel, we just cleared, with Iran. Well, in, in 2005, under the leadership of Ariel Sharon, Israel cleared out of Gaza in its entirety. Uh, not not even the the bodies of the dead were exhumed and taken out. And then, uh, and, and what we got instead of uh, peace and stability is this this uh, hotbed of of uh, exterminatory hostility. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they, we now need to start thinking about what would replace Hamas. But meanwhile, uh, the idea that Israel has dealt with the Iranian challenge and turned back uh, to Gaza first, and then we would need to see what we what happens in the north because we cannot allow tens of thousands of Israelis to remain uprooted from their homes uh, for in perpetuity. But meanwhile, what has changed, and has changed in a fairly dramatic fashion, is that the, the night of April 14 brought into focus the um, new reality, which has been emerging uh, over the year of the last over the last few years, to some extent, even before the, it precedes the Abram Accords, but it was made much more uh, easy to implement mm -hmm. after the Abram Accords, of Israeli cooperation, close Israeli cooperation, with key like-minded, you know, that's the new term of modern diplomacy, right. like key like-minded Arab nations uh, facing the Iranian challenge through the coordination of Air defense, air, air defense in the broader sense of air and missile uh, defense. Uh, you know, here at uh, the TV7 studio, you often meet with uh, uh, General Don Gavish, who was one of the people who actually built this capacity and should be quite proud of what he wrote. Um, what was tested at that night were two things simultaneously the technological, amazing technological superiority. Perfor superiority, performance of the Israeli systems, like Aero 3, which Germany now feels, I think, quite vindicated in having acquired, and, and Aero 2, and the, the lower uh, levels of David Sling. David Sling, and the, the Iron Dome we know works. And now the, uh, the, the higher uh, um, layers of the uh, sliding door system mm -hmm. were put to work in a remarkable fashion. I mean, uh, 90, uh, they, they say 99%, but that includes the, the attack from Lebanon. Uh, but of the 300 and odd uh, that the Iranians launched, about four, or between four and six managed to get in and did minimal, I mean, negligible damage, except for this poor Bedouin girl who may have been hit 
either by debris from an uh, interceptor or from one of the missiles. But at the end of the day, nothing. It's, it's, utter, it's, it's a, an utterly failed attack. But uh, the other aspect is that part of the effort to foil this, particularly when it comes to uh, the drones and cruise missiles, uh, was taken uh, was was uh, undertaken by our partners in this system, uh, namely the Americans, the Brits, the French, and, and the Jordanians, the Jordanians yeah. and, and and the Saudis. And to the best of my understanding, also the Saudis, although uh, neither the Jordanians nor the Saudis are running around uh, uh, taking credits for obvious reasons, but but the result is is fascinating. Now, people talk about the Middle East Air Defense Treaty Organization or MEAD to kind of as if this was a NATO-like organization. That's a misnomer because it's not a treaty. There's no treaty and there's no organization. What is there? And that's where what made all the difference, is that once Israel was moved uh, in 2021, there was a decision taken by the Trump administration, implemented by the Biden administration, uh, Israel was moved from the uh, European command to the central command, CENTCOM, uh, area of responsibility, what the Americans call, you know, a a a a AOR. This was a sea change. It, it, and it, it meant that the commander of, of CENTCOM could, and, and his uh, uh, system, could coordinate, could work over time to coordinate and plan and, and prepare exactly for this kind of event. Right. With Almost remarkable full integration. Results. Original yes. integration with the with American the, leadership. With American leadership and, and, and with the uh, capacity of systems to speak to each other. Amazing. amazing. And that's, that's always been, and of course it gives you a, a, the benefit of orthogonal points of, of uh, detection. Mm -hmm. You see um, missile uh, incoming missile from nine, angles at 90% gives you a much greater degree right. of accuracy in, in interception. Right. Remarkable results, and uh, notably, and, and this is not a secret, uh, CNC, uh, Eric Corella, of, of commander of Sankov, spent the two days right. before the attack right. in the, what we call the hole in the ground, the <laughs> bore, <laughs> the, the, in, in Tel Aviv, in the, uh, the Air Force, IAF uh, command, uh, yes. uh, command uh, and, uh, facility. Remarkable, the whole thing, uh, uh, quite transformative, uh, very long-term uh, implications. Um, so in this respect, uh, this was a good month for Israeli-American regional cooperation. It was also a good month at the end of the day, despite some very uh, unpleasant aspects of what's happening in America. This was also a good month in the sense that finally we saw the package of support for Israel, Ukraine, and Taiwan moves through Congress, despite uh, a long, long period of inter-party bickering and uh, um, every party tried to load on their favorite uh, um, items so on the agenda. This, Iran, and, yeah, quite symbolically, after the 14th of April attack by the Iranian, brazen attack on the 14th, we got 14th and odd billion dollars. Billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a, the largest the largest aid package Israel ever received. Yeah. Uh, it time. includes yeah. uh, the, the annual 3.8, uh, which is part of the uh, MOU, the 10-year MOU, but was added on of those uh, $4.4 billion to basically uh, cover uh, uh, the cost of uh, replenishing, yeah, uh, replenishing yeah. that has been going on already from October seven onwards. The administration right. uh, basically uh, depleted existing stocks to provide right. Israel, and there's more coming. And there's uh, a, a very large um, uh, sum allocated for the air defense capabilities sure, sure. At, at the various levels. Uh, so uh, basically, this is a monumental achievement. And also, uh, it had for the, the relationship uh, included the component also of platforms like F thirty five and things like yes, that. Yes, and then like fund, 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 billion. Yeah, that, 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 and, and of course, next year, uh, whoever uh, the next the next administration will need to settle down and, and negotiate a new MOU uh, um, sooner rather than later. Right. 
having said all this, we are, we do have uh, problematic aspects of the uh, of the relationship, which, to be very blunt, uh, I would say we are looking at a, a pro-Israel anti-BB or and the uh, policy or kind of uh, uh, com- total commitment to Israel uh, as such, but um, signals of dismay or, or worse dissatisfaction, the, the satisfaction the directed least. at the Israel, present Israeli coalition yeah, yeah. so the designation of a specific uh, IDF unit uh, paradoxically uh, one which is uh, the ultra orthodox um, battalion um, in in uh, operating in in uh, Gaza in, no in Judea and Samaria ah, beforehand yeah in the uh, Netza Judea and, and right. to designate them uh, for for restrictions under the Lehi, Lehi um, I mean uh, th- this is this is troubling for a lot of Israelis across the political spectrum uh, including the opposition right uh, but it's a very clear indication that the Biden administration needs to please. Um, the anti-israel progressives, the progressives yeah. uh, without breaking with Israel right so they they are looking for to pinpoint the fine balance uh, for Biden especially uh, six months before elections so he has to be really very careful politically yes so strategically they continue to support Israel for obvious reasons it's a great American national interest politically they have to show some sympathy and To the Palestinians and uh, in a way to punish those who are flagrantly against Palestinians like the some ultra orthodox or some of the settlers exactly and and to signal that uh, uh, they, they, they are unhappy with the present makeup of the Israeli coalition and that was the language also heard from Chuck Schumer that's extremely unusual and For the most prominent um, uh, Jewish person in the American political spectrum to to go She's after the majority the, leader the, in Senate majority yeah. leader in the Senate to, to speak in that manner uh, of the Prime Minister of Israel um, <clears throat> uh, we, we live in unsettled times for sure and and to some extent uh, the problem is that Israel has yet to articulate beyond this one pager from late February. Uh, um, a, a coherent concept of what it wants to do in in Gaza uh, the day after but um, the time f- to do so is is, is now because nearing, uh, yes. is nearing because once uh, uh, the IDF goes after the remnants of Hamas in Rafa we have to but Iran let's let's try to break down all these components so we have the the regional issue the geopolitical issue of With Iran so it seems like Iran made a mistake because they exposed themselves they did not succeed uh, and that would lead the ground maybe for cementing the relations between Israel and the Saudis and the other Sunni that's, countries so this is something in a strategic that's way what the Americans yes, still hope to, to isolate be able to do Iran so this is one big component that I would say Israel uh, and the America and the American uh, allies here in the region can put a check in the box that we are on the, it was a good month one, for one, the one more building block yes yes because it's part of a, a much larger equation exactly. that involves of Russia course. and China now right but this could bring about at some point hopefully and of course all the components are interrelated but this could bring about a normalization of relations between Israel and Saudi Arabia also to the vision of Of the Americans of the uh, economic corridor from the Far East all the way through Saudi Arabia to uh, and Israel to the Mediterranean and to Europe so this is a something that we see a clear future but the other again what would probably be again Modi's India of course uh, the of elections course. are still if pending could, but that, right. that's what it looks by like. the way just in parentheses if we could I mean we collective uh, Western uh, uh, countries and could pull India out of the bricks India is right in the middle of the bricks I think it would be a huge huge Brooks. geopolitical yes, yes. and no, then no be, I in the bricks right because yes. India is, is is really there the the odd because you know they are the ones who are that would be a broken middle. brick exactly uh. so this is the one component now the other two components are of course Gaza 
And as you uh, already mentioned, you know, we have to take Gaza and to finish with Hamas militarily, but then it's not enough. We know that every military operation has, at the end, a political end, which as, have, we have to as think. As the old uh, Prussian taught us, exactly. uh, von Clausewitz. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So we have to think, and Israel uh, has to think, what will be the regime in Gaza when the operation is done, how to do it together with the Egyptians, with the Americans, all our allies, one hand. And the other component, which I think is the probably the toughest nut at this point, is Hezbollah in the north which yes. is the situation is not sustainable. And we have either to bring about pol in political way uh, the uh, implementation of 1701, United Nations Security Resolutions from 2006, which means Hezbollah has to be pulled back. And uh, if we can do it politically, that's fine. But if not, we'll have to take action. And frankly, our deterrence and our ability to back uh, the American and French negotiating effort uh, with a credible military threat depends on finishing the job in, in Rafa with all the complications right. involved. So uh, um, it's, it's a step by step. Uh, I, don't, I don't see Israel uh, launching a major campaign against Hezbollah with its hands still full of the situation in Gaza. So it's, it's, it is a, gradu uh, a gradual or a modular uh, approach, but ultimately uh, there is no way we can leave the, the Radwan force uh, in, uh, intact south of the Litani River. Sure. And uh, they are not fully, uh, they're not intact already. They've lost their commander sure. uh, and, and many of their uh, senior level uh, but still 70, people, they of are our being civilians. taught a lesson about our capability. Right. But on the other hand, you're right. We have tens of thousands, 77, 75. Out of thousand, their homes, yeah. yeah. And they will not return evacuated. unless and until Hezbollah is totally out of sight and is not a, in a uh, position to threaten them. True. So uh, uh, we, the, 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 the IDF has shown the capacity of the Israeli Air Force, artillery, etc., of, of pinpointing and destroying their uh, anti-tank uh, uh, attacks uh, and so the, that level that has gone down, but they are increasingly using the Ukrainian war um, technology of uh, of attack drones, which um, became the the new the new uh, weapon of war. Uh, we saw this uh, with the Iranians, uh, about 170 uh, long-range, uh, large long-range drones. Which I suspect, Iran, as, as we, we are... We see them it, also in Lebanon. As we are very much concentrated, I know that we have pretty much speeded up on the double the technology of laser. It seems right. like the laser technology... That's also being funded by the American Right, package. but that could be maybe a solution against these uh, um, drones, maybe. Possibly, yes, because it's, it's much cheaper, of course, exactly. to bring them down by a, a laser beam than by a, an interceptor missile that costs about 10 times, if not more, than anything thrown at it. Right. But, um, uh, and, and it is, it, 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 there are limitations to the laser technology, particularly weather limitations, but at the end of the day, yes, uh, the combination of, enter, uh, of electronic warfare disrupting uh, these drones and and laser and and iron dome and and air interception. Uh, ultimately, we would have solutions, but for the time being, we've we are paying a price. Uh, we've lost uh, some good men up north uh, in this battle, but Hezbollah is paying a much higher price. Oh yeah, in, in, in uh, the same ratio, I think, as in Gaza, about fifty to to one. Uh, in our losses, our, mm -hmm. our military losses compared to theirs. Yeah, and in a way, uh, this tit for tat has a more significance uh, with, again, superiority of the IDF, where we peel off strategic assets of uh, Hezbollah, in a way preparing the ground for if we need, you know, uh, uh, moving in, uh, that would be very helpful or to take out uh, many of their yeah, defense not a installations. And, and this would be a deep maneuver. You know, for years, uh, the last few years, it's part of the new Mediterranean relationship. That division that we mentioned, the uh, Commando Division 98, has been going to Cyprus uh, on a yearly basis yeah. to train in the high Troodos 
uh, for scenarios which are openly acknowledged as relevant to Lebanon. So uh, we need uh, Hezbollah need to think yeah. twice uh, before way, they uh, reject the mediation can, effort. Can you see, and without divulging too much of uh, you know, operational uh, secrets, but can you see an option of a uh, marine invasion style D-Day, nineteen forty four, coming, I would you know, landing on the shores of. Uh, uh, Beirut. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the Amer- the Americans did it in fifty eight. Also, yes, <laughs> yes, without without any resistance. Yeah. Uh, we we actually had the one the one and only uh, uh, landing operation uh, in Israeli military history was in ni- in nineteen eighty two uh, at the uh, uh, Awali. Yeah, uh, when we landed a, a brigade. Uh, to maneuver behind Palestinian lines in, in the war, in, in what we call the first Lebanon war. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would keep our, our <laughs> enemies guessing exactly. in this respect. So we have, right, so we have pretty much broken up the uh, regional component, Iran, Hamas, Gaza, Lebanon, Hezbollah. The last thing is, and we don't have much time, is we see how the Palestinian and their collaborators take the war, a psychological political war into abroad, the entire world, the United States, Europe, with all these incitements, with all these demonstrations, where they use very much idiot, I would say useful idiots, who are vouching for the first time in history for terror organization, Hezbollah and Hamas. It's just unbelievable. Well, um, we've been, I've, I've seen warnings from my friend David Bernstein and others for years already that woke logic leads to anti-Semitism, to the rejection of the right of the Jewish people to self-determination and to support for terrorism. And that, I think, is an extremely dangerous phenomenon. Yeah. Thank you, Iran, and thank you to our viewers again for watching another program of Middle East Review from TV7 in Jerusalem. TV7's productions and editorials, we invite you to visit our website at tv7israelnews.com.